Hello, hello, and welcome to a new episode of Rambling from Two Meddling Kids. I'm your host, Edward Hunt, joined by Mike Cunningham, and we are the Meddling Kids. So for those of you just joining, or if you'd like a quick refresher, what we do is we like to review movies. We will never uh, spoil anything in the very beginning. We give a spoiler-free review. Today's movie is The Pale Blue Eye. And then, after giving a spoiler-free review, we give you the chance to pause, maybe check out the movie if you'd like it, but then make sure you come back to us so that way you can hear our play-by-play. Kind of like you're there watching the movie with us, but do a podcast. Uh, other than that, thanks for joining us. Mike, you ready to get started? Yes, I am. All right, let's get it. The Pale Blue Eye, what'd you think? Spoiler-free review. Oh, that's right. <laughs> this month. Um, I, I really enjoyed it, actually. Okay. I, I, I've always loved a mystery. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of that detective, uh, kind of who done it. I've always loved the puzzle. Yeah. I think this is very well, it's very much in, in line with your uh, Sherlock Holmes, mm-hmm. uh, Hercule Poirot, and now uh, Home Away from uh, Glass Onion. Oh yeah, Ben Benoit Blanc. Blanc. It was yeah, like Benoit this, Blanc. Yeah, this yeah. world renowned detective for sure. Um, and it was like kind of really cool. I think the setting was really cool. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't often enjoy period things, mm-hmm. but I'm noticing I really like uh, what's his name, uh, Christian Bale, the star of this. Oh, yeah, Christian Bale's and uh, well, just as an actor, but yeah. in in these period pieces, it reminded mm-hmm. me of like the Prestige. Okay, which yeah, I really yeah. love him in. That's one of my favorite movies. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was gonna watch it today because I, mean, <laughs> I was like, no, I got other things. To watch. <laughs> um, yeah, but no, I just I kind of love the mystery of it, the, mm-hmm. how it unfolded. The pacing was a little slow. It's like I, I think my one gripe with it was the fact that it was like there's a murder that's happening mm-hmm. so that that should add some urgency to this nah, nah this is like the early 1800s you know, oh, they, they, we're not urgent <laughs> that, that was something that got me bad it was like when the the people that hired him was like you still haven't solved it it was like so i don't have a lab yeah, like, <laughs> I, have a, dude, I have your dna there's no dna testing here all right it's like there's a john Mulaney joke talking about like uh, uh, detectives or forensic science in like the 1800s yeah. and it was just like yeah so you see here the person was murdered and uh, the detective just goes Gross. Gross. <laughs> Ew. <laughs> That's not good. We don't have the benefits of technology, but it was, I really did love like um, the character of mm-hmm. Edgar Allan Poe. Sure. Yeah. Um, I was, I really want to look into that as just like, is this something that uh, they kind of wanted to send around? Cause I was, I think it's a, it's a novel actually. Yes. Um, but yeah, I really loved his character. We talked about who played him, mm-hmm. uh, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But it was just like I, the characters are great. I think the story was well done. Mm-hmm. Um, setting was great. Uh, so yeah, I, I, I would give it a four. You were four. Okay. Four. I was circling around three and a half just mm-hmm. because of some of the pacing. Yeah, yeah. And I, I was a little ups, not upset by the ending, but it was like it ended, and then it was just like, but wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> And I felt like that was kind of dragged out. So, oh, so honestly, maybe three and a half. I okay. think the the ending it made up for itself, but it was also kind of unnecessary in mm-hmm. a way. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, maybe three and a half. Actually, three and a half. But really enjoyable. Mm-hmm. I, I I think I appreciate you suggesting this because of the fact that even though I love Christian Bell, I don't watch. I'm not one of those cinephiles that watches just anything. That I still there's still like a. Uh, the list or like uh, mm-hmm. there's a, some hesitance um, to certain movies. So like it was something that was under my radar. I didn't see any like no mm-hmm. promo for it or anything like that, but it was like something that I definitely enjoyed. So I would definitely suggest it. So three and a half. Cool. <clears throat> awesome. Uh, I'm going to echo a lot of what Mike said. I think as a period piece, um, costume was really cool. How even like all the characters I've, granted, I'm not from the early 1800s. I haven't been there personally, but I'm like, yeah, it makes sense. If I was from the early 1800s, this is how I'd act for sure. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be me. Uh, so that was really cool. I thought the portrayals were great. Christian Bale, um, Henry or Harry Melling, I'm blanking on it. Harry Melling. Harry Melling, um, who we're, we'll get into, uh, who was Edgar Allan Poe. I thought he did a phenomenal job. My issue was kind of with the story. Uh, and I think these, and why I say that is I think the idea Awesome. Really cool. Edgar Allan Poe did actually go to West Point for a little bit. He got kicked out. Okay. Um, and it just wasn't for him. Really cool story. Really cool idea. I thought it was acted very well. And I, it makes me want to read the book because I think the movie just couldn't... I bet the book is a lot better than the movie. I'm always fascinated by the certain books not being able to be mm-hmm. uh, adapted. Yeah. Like there was... A, the, I think Martin Scorsese said that about... Uh, what was that... Uh, Oprah movie that came out, the little girl. I don't know, but it was like there's certain movies that are just unadapted. And I was like, I can't figure out why. Yeah, and I think 
sometimes I guess you get too too much into the minutia of like certain details. Mm-hmm. And, and that's I think, why you got Easter eggs and all that shit. So yeah. but it was like it's so it's so fascinating that certain movies just you can't translate everything from uh, from a page to yeah. the screen. You can just do, have so much more detail in books. Mm-hmm. And I think that's what this movie missed for me mm-hmm. was the detail. Got and it. I'll like point out these examples as we go through as well. Um, but let me say, <clears throat> I'm going to give it a three out of five. I actually almost gave it a two out of five for mm-hmm. story reasons. Not because, it, again, I think it was acted very well. I think the idea is really cool. I think the period piece was very nice. Story pieces, I was like, mm, I'm missing these beats. Mm-hmm. But Again, because of all the other things, I'm going to give it the three. Because, but from a story perspective, again, good idea. But it just if there were more details, it's a two hour and ten minute movie, or yeah. two hour is the runtime. But it needs more detail to really do it. There's a lot of intersecting stories going on, mm-hmm. and then since there's so much detail, I keep saying detail. Um, but the movie does a little bit better at telling rather than showing sometimes. Which yeah, yeah that movie is something that movie. even like yeah, that, yeah, we can get into it. Yeah. yeah. But what I will say is like I think. The reason why I rated it so high is be- mm-hmm. it being a mystery. Yeah, I really enjoyed. It's like when we watched the Glass Onion, and mm-hmm. it would have been nicer to see them that original puzzle box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and how they all work together to solve it. Mm-hmm. Um, I enjoyed seeing like when they had the the note or, okay. or the, yes. the 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 the, um, the journal and him like kind of deciphering. I enjoyed seeing kind of working through a detective mind in that way. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I did, I think that kind of boosted it. For up. sure. Yeah. No, definitely. So, I mean, so I'm going to give it a three, might give it a three and a half. It's worth seeing. It's on Netflix. So I think just about everybody either has, or they take Netflix from their mom or dad. Yeah, or so they, <laughs> they get it together. <laughs> they're they're crocking dumb. Hey, exactly. So it's very easy to see this movie. If you have not seen it yet, honestly, I'd say, yeah, check it out this weekend or this upcoming week. And Hey, let us know what you think as well. Before we start giving our background on everything and our play by play, a quick word from our sponsors, just be. Uh, my name is Edward Hunt. I'm a real estate agent in the DMV. Um, I've helped people buy and sell in Maryland and D.C. personally. Others on my team, the Just Be team again, uh, also help Virginia. And our brokerage is Compass, a phenomenal brokerage that is nationwide. So even if you don't live in the DMV, but you still want to buy or sell a home, hey, feel free. Reach out to the meddling kids or me personally, and I'll make sure to find you an excellent agent. From there, I always like to, I'm going to call it a meddling kids uh, product coming out. You'll start seeing more stuff on our Instagram and socials for a project I'm working on, and I can't wait to share it with everybody. But let's get back to the Pale Blue Eye. Mike, let's give us some background on this, please. Okay, so the Pale Blue Eye came out technically this year, even though there was a, a slight release during Christmas mm-hmm. of 2022. Yeah. But it's a movie from 2023 directed by Scott Cooper. little trivia fact, this is his third movie working with uh, – Chris and Bale. Oh, cool. What are the other two? The Out of the Furnace. Okay. This was in 2013. And then it. Hostiles okay. uh, in 2017. I, yeah, I hadn't seen either. Yeah. yeah Honestly, yeah. he hasn't done much okay. Fair. As, a, as, a, as a director. But um, that was a little interesting tidbit. Um, starring, like we said, Christian Bale as Landor. His name was like Augustus or something like that, but I, yeah. just, I like just Landor. Detective Landor. Uh, Harry Melling as Edgar, and as we as you looked up, Harry Melling played uh, Dudley, Dudley Dursley. Dursley. <laughs> Dudley Dursley and all the Harry From Potter. Harry Potter. Um, <laughs> he, has and like, he did have a memorable face, but it was just like, I, I do want to see less of it. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you get you see <laughs> Dudley Dursley go from this like real chunky little kid to now this gaunt Edgar yeah. Allan Poe character. Good Very word. Good word. Yeah. Worded it in. <laughs> What's up? Worded it in. Worded it in. <laughs> gaunt. That is the word. <laughs> Mine was impetuous. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> Don't know how to use it in a sentence. Indubitably, <laughs> um, so they these are the the kind of this the the duo of Edgar Allan Poe and uh, Detective Landor. Yeah, for sure. You have uh, Gillian Anderson as Julia, uh, Lucy Boy Boy Boyton or something mm-hmm. like that as Leia. Leia. Mm-hmm. Uh, Robert Duvall showed up. That was like really yeah. nice as uh, Pepe. Uh, Toby Jones as Daniel. Charlotte Gainsbourg as Patsy, and Timothy Spall as Thayer. Okay. I feel like I know, I know him from something. I feel like one of those. It must have been Timothy Small. He must have been um, Peter Pettigrew. I oh, think. I'm pretty okay. sure. Okay, I'm pretty yeah. sure. Um, Harry Potter cast getting together. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the tagline for this movie was "Every Heart Tells a Tale." Okay, interesting. Yeah. And also, I think with the Edgar Allan Poe's, like there was different the signs of like the Raven. Yeah, a Telltale Heart. Yeah, exactly. Telltale Heart. I don't know right any there. other Ra- uh, Edgar Allan Poe things. Uh, there's the Red Death. There, uh, there's I've read a lot of Edgar Allan Poe, but I'm blanking on some of. Them. I feel like I knew it back in high school. Like, yeah, exactly. but it was, like it's yeah. been a minute. Um, so, like you said, the runtime was two hours and ten minutes. Mm-hmm. The release date was January 6, twenty twenty three. The budget was seventy two million. 
72 million? Yeah. Wow. Okay. Um, that makes sense. It looked, it was very pretty. Yeah. It was, it was very pretty. Yeah. Uh, and also, I think fairly easy because it seemed like just one location for the most part. Mm-hmm. Like they weren't really traveling. Yeah. Uh, no box office, obviously, because it was just a limited release. So we're yeah. not going to count that. Nope. Uh, the currently, obviously, it just came out t- t- today. <laughs> and we were watching and reviewed it today, too. Um, <laughs> The Rotten Tomato score is a 66 with okay. an audience score of a 72, but okay. obviously that that's in flux. And, yeah, you know, it just dropped, um, but not bad. Like you said, yeah. it's a, a a good movie, and obviously more people, lean, more critics, obviously lean towards your your opinion of the mind. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the genre, I thought I'd just add this: it is a crime horror mystery, but but not heavy on the horror. Very light on. It was more thriller than, yeah. than horror. Yeah, which is interesting because you see Edgar Allan Poe, and you just assume he he's always had those macabre elements. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, Fun fact: I used to think macabre was pronounced macabre. <laughs> <laughs> I told you my story about childhoods. <laughs> okay. That's the problem with uh, reading a lot of books as a child. I'm not a dumb dumb, but I'm also not a smart. Yeah. <laughs> well, my problem is like I just read books. So I was like, yeah, I've seen macabre. And time. you never hear it out loud. Yeah, because I just read it. It's like, oh yeah, macabre. <laughs> Got it. Macabre. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Awkward. Oh, uh, until I say it as an adult, they can make fun of me. <laughs> <laughs> but okay, um, that is that is what uh, they made the background information. On. Perfect, awesome, Mike. Thank you very much. So, a little bit of background and everything. Again, though, we would say we haven't spoiled anything yet. We do actually kind of recommend going out and checking it out. It's on Netflix. If you'd like to give it a pause, just make sure you come back. Otherwise, hey, we warned you. Time for the spoilers, Mike. How does this thing start? It starts with an Edgar Allan Poe quote. I right. did not get it, and this is crazy. Like I watched it at home. I could have paused. I did not. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you know what? I'm not doing this. Keep it moving. We're good. But it was a really deep quote about, I think, death. Mm-hmm. It's obviously in, in line with that. Watch the movie. You'll see it. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> and then we get a tag, like a sweeping shot, and it says uh, Hudson Valley, New York, yep. 1830. Mm-hmm. And we are at West Point um, Academy. Mm-hmm. Military Academy. Military so Academy. Yeah. And then, so there's a shot of, in the mist, you see a man, a silhouette mm-hmm. of somebody hanging. Yes. And then we get a sweeping shot of like a creek and you, we get introduced to our, our protagonist and Christian Bell playing mm-hmm. uh, Detective Louder, Landor. Landor. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to do better because yeah. I was messing up before rooms. <laughs> I believe in you. Man. <laughs> so Landor is kneeling over the creek. He seems to be, you know, washing his hands or taking a drink. Mm-hmm. And then he hears a bugle sound. Yes. And so he goes back to his house, and there's a messenger there saying that he's being summoned to the captain of mm-hmm. West Point Academy. Um, sorry. No, very good. And it was very good if he was like, as a, you know, what if I don't want to come? And yeah. the captain was like, as a private citizen, you have no, you know, you don't need to listen to this. And he kind of like steps yeah. forward menacing. I'm like, that's a threat. All right. <laughs> it's just like, yeah, I did notice that hesitance to, um, <laughs> To go right, mm-hmm. okay. yeah. Obviously, we we just met him. Like, yeah, there's no exposition on who he is, mm-hmm. what he does, or anything like that. So it's weird that like he gets summoned. He was like, "What if I don't want to go though? What's up? Yeah, what's up? <laughs> what, what are you gonna do?" And they're like, "Oh, we're gonna do something." He said, "That's <laughs> your boy." <laughs> said, "Good point. You will. You're military. I got it." <laughs> but so he's a little bit hesitant, but he still goes on a ride. Mm-hmm. And as a like, he's in a carriage to the uh, to West Point. Cat carriage, right? It was yeah, it was carriage. Yeah, horse drawn carriage. Yeah. Um. As he's on the way to the carriage, you hear a voiceover of mm-hmm. like his accolades. Yes. Like, so like uh, things like uh, former cases he mm-hmm. solved. One of the most famous detectives in New York. Yeah. yeah. Some background about his. And it's crazy because it said West Point. It kept messing me up. And mm-hmm. it was just the quick. I thought it was D.C. Once again, <laughs> still <laughs> dumb dumb. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, you're our dumb dumb. All right. <laughs> 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 that means more than you think. Uh, <laughs> I got you. <laughs> but anyway, so yeah, as, they're, as he's uh, getting taking the ride to West Point, there's voiceover about mm-hmm. his former cases, who yeah. he is, and this, this is where you get the exposition. But I appreciate this kind of exposition mm-hmm. because it's, you see the character going in a carriage, clearly no one in the carriage is talking, but you're hearing why I should yeah. care about this character, and it's not all of a sudden them sitting across from a desk, so you're the guy that did this. Even though technically it was. Technically it was. But you didn't see it as a... Exactly, and I like that. I appreciate that. Yeah, that, that. was interesting. Yeah. And then they mentioned his wife had passed, mm-hmm. I think two, they, I, th- I thought they said three years probably. I'm pretty sure three. He says two, he says two later on. So, okay. Yeah. Um, when he meets um, uh, Jillian Anderson's character. Oh, for sure. But okay. yeah, they said his wife's been dead for three years. Mm-hmm. Uh, you have my, you know, they you have our sympathy. Yeah. And then they get right into it. Yes. Because um, <laughs> I think it, it is also one of those things where it's just like, I think Hollywood saying, we know that this mm-hmm. is exposition. Yeah. So he was like, well, you told me all about myself. You just here to, like, you know, read my resume. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, why are we here? 
So they get right into it, and you find out that a cadet has committed suicide. Yes. Um, and I think the higher ups from Washington, and maybe that's what it was. Oh, they yeah, mentioned from Washington. They did mention yes. Washington. So I was like, is West Point? I'm not going to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> West Point is in New York. Higher up from Washington being commanding officers stationed around Washington. Yes. There we go. That's, I'm not, smart, smart. There you go. It's the 1800s. It's a different time, all right? <laughs> but yeah, so they mentioned that there's pressure because of the fact that as you know, a military academy, they, their goal is to dis- teach these young men discipline mm-hmm. and order, but they, want, they do have a line that they won't cross, yeah. right? Because you want to, you want to, you know, discipline somebody but not break them. Exactly. Um, they make sure it's like, hey, we know to not drive someone to suicide. We're better than that. Yeah. And then what made it even, but then you have like, oh, well, this is a mortician case, but then what happened to the body? After? Yeah. So, yeah, you find out that uh, Leroy, they don't say Leroy, that's me being urban. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Leroy Fry. <laughs> uh, no, all right. Leroy Fry. <laughs> Leroy Fry. A two-year cadet. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't remember. I think from Kentucky. Okay, I believe yeah. um, hanged himself. Yes, and but the any of the like so even um, Landor is like, well, why am I here? Mm-hmm. And you find out that after they got the body, they found the body, took it to the to the morgue. The body was further violated. Yes, and somebody carved out the heart, mm-hmm. and that's why that's why the you know the people from DC are like up in arms that we need to you know because it's not just a suicide. This is a body like a that sounds like a homicide. Yeah, yeah. Um, so they go see the body mm-hmm. first, um, right? Yeah, they go, yeah, they go to the oh. body, and then they're examining it, and the mortician kind of gives like a play-by-play of what happened, mm-hmm. and then uh, Landor's like, well, check the back of the head, and then... Well, yeah, because it's... Mm-hmm. So actually, first he went, they go to um, to interrogate the night guard. The yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Why, that's why I was asking yeah, like, the, the order. But yeah, so first he has a, the, a meeting with the doctor to see mm-hmm. the body. Um, and they, they just, they show that basically that it was, um, the way the heart was carved out, it was done by someone a professional because he knew not to, the way he went in mm-hmm. or they went in, sorry. Um, they knew not, they cut in a way that it didn't damage the heart. Yes. They cut like from an angle away from the yeah. heart. So that way so it was just like, it might not have been somebody that was like felt like properly educated, but educated enough to, to know. Yeah. And so after that, he goes and talks to the night guardsman who found mm-hmm. the body. Yes. And um, I think he he mentioned something about like he you know it was out of his way technically, but yeah. he heard something. He thought it was an animal in a trap. Mm-hmm. He heard a scuffle. Yeah, so he wanted to you know help out. Mm-hmm. And he says he he found him, and what was interesting, his feet were still on the ground. Yes, um, which means how could he hang himself if his feet were actually mm-hmm. still on the ground? And then Mystery. Landor, yeah, Landor <laughs> asked, well, "Did you see anybody else?" And he mm-hmm. says, "No." Right. And then that's when they go back. Um, and that's when they go back and look at the body again. Yeah, now it's submerged in water for some reason. I think that's embalming fluid. Oh, uh, that's, that's probably right. embalming okay. fluid. Okay. Be my guess. Um, I don't know. Think, it's, times. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, that's what they dunk a body in. So it's a big bathtub for yeah. when it's being embalming fluid. Yeah, so that's when that now Landor and the captain are looking at it, and the doctor comes back and is like, what, what is the meaning of this? Mm-hmm. And that's when they're inspecting the body and they find that there's an abrasion or something. Contusion. In the back, contusion. Which in means the back of one the force trauma to the back yeah. of the head broke, like, kind of broke skin. And then the hand. And then, yeah, he looks at his hands and he like, obviously Rick and Morrison said it, mm-hmm. but he pulls back the fingers and there's a sliver of a note. Yeah. And so now they're ruling it a homicide. Fun fact. And I could be totally wrong. If I'm wrong, hey, tweet at us and tell me I'm wrong. Engagement. But no, uh, I'm pretty sure with rigor mortis, it actually goes away after a little bit. Oh, okay. So, like, the body has it at first, but then a little bit later it goes away. So, that's how morticians can easily manipulate bodies, like, within like 12 to 24 hours after they die, okay. because it goes away. Otherwise, there'd be no way to put them all in, like, the nice clothes and everything else. But so, it had been so ma- Well, I don't know how that quickly. Yeah, it's true. So, it could have happened when they fell at that point. But, but yeah. I don't know. But it, obviously, the hand was locked. Yeah, as well. exactly. And you hear this, like, cracking noise yeah. as you go. And the mortician, of course, didn't have this. So, my note was, worst mortician ever. Yeah. <laughs> like, he missed That's a, That was interesting. It was like, as you're, because once again, it is a mystery. It's yeah. It's a mystery, you know, those different things. So, you're like, you're also playing detective as the mm-hmm. audience. Like, yep. Well, he didn't notice the uh, the contusion in the back of the head. Mm-hmm. He didn't even try to open his hands. Like, what's what's that? that immediately made me suspect. Yeah, I was immediately like, like oh, all right, all right. Uh, all right. <laughs> um, so then uh, the captain, so like they're walking out and the captain goes, so oh, will you take the case? Because mm-hmm. obviously, obviously this is a murder. It's yeah. just a, you know, a run of the mill, you know, occurrence. And he gives 
Uh, he says, you are to report to me, mm-hmm. like, and all these different things. Don't talk to anybody else. Mm-hmm. And he gives him um, an interesting, says, and no drinking. Yeah. Because your reputation precedes you. Yeah. Though I will say, he says that, and this is kind of one of the examples. I'm like, I didn't feel, like, he did order a beer. as soon. As, it was the morning time when he got to West Point. Yeah. So if you want a coffee, he's like, no, I'll have a beer. So you're like, okay, that's weird. It's 9 o'clock in the morning. Mm-hmm. But other than that, like, when they were examining the body, he wasn't drinking from a flash. Yeah. So it kind of came out of left field almost. And it seems like that could have been, again, small details. I bet that plays a bigger part in the book of like, mm-hmm. his drinking before him. But I don't know. It does yeah. play a little bit. I will say, yeah, it, I think, obviously, watching as many movies and mm-hmm. watch, uh, reading books and stuff like that, it did put a light in my head, yes. I guess, a bit. But no, it was just like, it was like, like, okay, one of those things this that maybe thing. Yeah. yeah, it's like, okay, this is a thing he enjoys. His drinking, his reputation precedes him. So I think yeah. right before, right after this, I think he goes back to the um, – to he the, goes back to the uh, to the scene of the, the crime. crime, yeah, and he is <laughs> approached yeah. by one of the cadets mm-hmm. that says that, um, you know, I wasn't a friend of the guy, mm-hmm. but I think you're looking for a poet. Yes, um, and then he just kind of walks away, <laughs> and he just wanders away weirdly. And I'm like, all right, <laughs> that was a weird interaction for sure. Um, and then they hop to the bar after this, right? Yeah, and then he goes, and this is what was funny because yes. it was just like no drinking. And then yeah. the next thing he does is go to a bar, and they. Um, I think the bartender said something like, "What what do we say about rules?" No, oh, yeah, he used to break in rules. He used to break in rules, yeah. yeah, which was which was fun. But once again, it, he, even the whole the whole movie, he was never drunk or anything like exactly. that. Like I've seen a bunch of movies where mm-hmm. there's a the the, the war battered detective or something like that, where it's just like he keeps fucking up because he's just intoxicated. Yeah, or he's just clearly, hungover, yeah, yeah, exactly. And but this was never like, that yes, was never the case. So that was a, that was a weird, yeah. uh, a weird. One. But once. Once again, like you said, I think probably the book delves deeper into it. Potentially, yeah. Um, and so when he's at the bar, he know. Oh, he asked about. Mm-hmm. I think he's asking the bartender. Sorry, sorry, the waitress. The waitress, like, Patsy. Patsy. Yeah. Um, about the because she mentioned mm-hmm. what happened to Fry. Yeah, out of nowhere, she's like, and, terrible thing. What happened to? So they, you know, they said that he uh, suffered for hours or something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, Landor's like, "Who's they?" Mm-hmm. And she points to a man and drinking alone in the in the in the corner, and it's. The same cadet that um, had approached him at the at the the crime Which scene. Which I did not realize at first. It was kind of hard it, to I'm tell insane. the difference. Yeah, it was kind of hard to. Like, I was like, "Is this the same pale, sullen mother?" <laughs> <laughs> like literally, every cadet when they wear their full uniform and hat, you're like, "I can't tell you apart." You're like, I, "It was yeah. like, yeah, I noticed it." It was like that was my first thing too. I was just, "Is this the same guy?" Yeah, it was like, "Is this the same guy that just told the poet?" Or is this the same guy that did the original? Like, who found the body? Yeah, were they all the same person the whole time? Is we are all real. Proud. Yeah, I think that's, <laughs> we're all Leroy. <laughs> Ah, Spartacus. <laughs> exactly. Like, ah, all right. Um, so yeah, so he goes over it, and we officially meet Cadet Edgar Allan Poe. Yes. E A Poe, Edgar A Poe, if you will. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> and he's a, he's a very eccentric, eccentric for sure. Yeah, individual. Um, and he goes about his theories about like what happened, mm-hmm. and you, I think once again Harry Melling does a very good job of this. It's very Jesse Eisenberg esque. Okay, yeah. I feel where it's like mm-hmm. that kind of like fidgety, scattered. Like, obviously brilliant. Yeah, the social skills not really there, so not knowing how to articulate makes sense. sense. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but it was just a very interesting introduction um, to the character. Finally, yes. Yeah, and then he mentions. I'm um, sorry, I lost myself. I know where As we're talking, it seems like. E.A. Poe knows a lot for some reason. Yeah, I had this, I was like, why does this man know so much? I'm like, <laughs> was he there? Yeah. I mean, um, oh, so yeah, he mentions Fry's uh, former roommate mm-hmm. as a because um, they had a falling out. Yes. A year prior, so they used to be roommates now or not. Mm-hmm. And so, like immediately after, Landor goes and um, interrogates or mm-hmm. questions. Yeah. Uh, his roommate and he mentions it was like uh, it, he. I wouldn't say it was a falling out. It was mm-hmm. just like a. A disagreement about yeah. some friends, I think, that um, Fry had started hanging out with. He was hanging out with a bad sort. A bad sort, yeah. yeah. So that it was because of that, he was like, he was hanging out with a bad sort. I decided to get out of here. They're like, why didn't you tell us this? He was like, well, that was years ago. Didn't think it really mattered. Mm-hmm. And then? And then, I think he interrogates somebody else in the room, but I, can't, I don't I feel like nothing. Yeah, then there was like a sick dude. He was like, I'm sick, sir. Okay. Yeah. And, and it was like, that's fine. But really, what, like, then he's back. And back talking to Poe, and now he hires Poe. Yes. He's like, I need, because obviously he's a cadet. He can get into the, mm-hmm. the I guess, barracks or like the, whatever yeah. it is. He can he can be his man on the inside. Do it for, for sure. Oh, but then even before we uh, potentially get that, or I guess maybe after he tells Poe this, there's the classic spinning dead wife trope that's in every movie. 
whenever a character has like a dead wife or dead girlfriend, they see them like smiling and spinning in a dress. It was in John Wick. It was in this. Really? That yeah. happened this early? Yeah, uh, it happened right around this time. I have my note for it. It's in between what we just said. Yeah. Okay. There was a, when she's like, she's like, he's like looking in his cabin at the, around this point. It's, he's in his cabin. It's before Edgar Allan Poe comes back and reports to him after what he's found. Okay, so then, and then was he hired him first? He then, hired yeah. him first. Then this happened. Yeah, so he okay. hired him first, as you said. And then yeah, he gives him he uh, he sells him to you know talk to the kind of get in with the cadets, mm-hmm. but also um, he gave him a note to the cipher, the yes. note that was found with the body to mm-hmm. the cipher. And I think that's when you're saying he's back at the cabin. And now he's back at the cabin waiting, and he d- he's, like, sniffing his dead wife's dress and thinking about how she used to spin and smile in that dress. Because, yeah. you know, every dead wife loves to smile and spin. It's literally their favorite <laughs> thing in the world. <laughs> this is like, if you have footage of, like, you and your wife in bed, and, like, she's under the sheets. Yeah. And, like, oh, she's not laughing. Like, oh, she's dead. Damn it. That's why, that's why I don't take pictures of my wife like that, because I don't want her to die. Right? I'm a good husband. <laughs> I don't want that to happen to her. Oh, <laughs> That'll be me in a dark room drinking, looking at videos. <laughs> I was like, why do you have a Polaroid? <laughs> she's smiling. <laughs> she's spinning in a dress. Um, but sir, this is the library. You can't be here. Um, oh but yeah, so <laughs> after that moment with yes. his wife, and I think that's what maybe that was the horror element. Mm-hmm. Kind of seeping in, but once again, I expected more horror. Yeah, there was. One I expected him to be haunted by his, because you know we learned something about Edgar a little bit later. Yeah, I expected them to be haunted by these things. Yeah, maybe, uh, possibly. But anyway, so Edgar comes in and gives his um, interpretation of because it's literally just a sliver of a note. Yeah, with four lines. Mm-hmm. Usually, you can't. The only word you can make out is on the third line. It says B. Yeah, he's um, very excited that he discovered nothing. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> it said, like, he said, "Don't be late. Yeah, yeah. come soon. Soon." Was yes. what he originally was. Yes. Like, he deciphered it as, and he's like, "I did it, and it was this." And he's like, "What about the first line?" He's like, "Oh, th- those are interesting." Yeah, it's, right? like, it's impossible. No one can do that. And then this is where you see the genius of mm-hmm. Landor as a detective. He was yeah. like, like talking about, um, like kind of walking you through his thought process. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he deciphers the whole note as "Meet me at," because he was, it was like "Meet me," but it was like, "Why would a." Why would a cadet want to meet a cadet, you know, privately? Yeah. It must have been a woman. Exactly. Yeah. Um, and it was like, meet me at, uh, where would you meet? At landing? Mm-hmm. Wherever it is. It was just like, so uh, Landor walks you walks Poe through, and obviously, and then in the same way, the audience, his thought process. Mm-hmm. And it was like, once, like I said, for me, as a person that loves puzzles and loves yeah. the detective story, I really enjoyed his him walking us through that. Definitely. And how that, how his mind works. Yeah. I think because it was, Landor's clearly testing Poe yeah. right here too. Because he thinks, he, he noticed something about Poe. Mm-hmm. He notices he thinks differently than others and he likes that. So he's also trying to test him here mm-hmm. and see what's going on for sure. And then I think shortly after, right after that, like, so they have that moment. I think Poe starts, he, and like you say, he's mm-hmm. still testing, but he's also a kind of wary of this young man. Yes. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah. he asked Patsy about, about mm-hmm. him. Which out of nowhere he's in bed with Patsy, and I had that. I moment. thought, yeah, that was. <laughs> I was just I was like, like, God damn, right. sir, keep your pants yeah, on. Because I'm just like, do they have prior history? Like, I'm like, that's what, what it was. There? It wasn't yeah. explained. Yeah, because they didn't even have a real exchange in the bar. It was just like, yeah. so sad. What happened to that boy? Yeah. They say X, and she was like, what, who says it? Yeah, and, and I guess was, we're fucking now. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, God damn it! <laughs> yeah, but and then like so, and then Patsy's character, she is like, she comes up like two or three times. Yeah, always, and like she's kind of like a sounding board slash the whole like maybe here's an idea for something, mm-hmm. and you're like kind of keep going, and like it would have been interesting to see more of that relationship and that character explored mm-hmm. a little bit more. But again, it's you can only do so much yeah. in a two hour movie. So yeah. he goes back to I think to the I guess the morgue or something like mm-hmm. that, and he's hearing voiceover from the doctor who did the autopsy. Yes, about um. Keeping a heart, keeping a heart, you know. Yeah. Ice. yeah. So he they he tells uh, Poe to meet him at the ice house. For the record, when I saw that, I honestly felt a little insulted because I'm like, clearly, I saw Christian Bell look at the bucket of ice, and I'm like, okay, yes, he's thinking about the heart. But then the voiceover of the doctor, I'm like, I could figure this out myself. <laughs> I knew this. I saw. Sir, it. you did not hire me to not understand <laughs> simple clues. I'm like, come on, man. Clearly, he's looking at ice and thinking about the heart. Yeah. Well, the heart could be preserved, no doubt. Man. All right. <laughs> But then they go to the ice house. <laughs> <laughs> they go to the ice house, and yeah. it's obviously empty. Yeah. Um, and he notices, and this is what I'm interesting, like, as he's walking through, you hear the boot. Mm-hmm. And it's, it always bothers me, like, Thriller just moves. It's like, if you don't tiptoe in your joy, <laughs> stop letting a potential, you know, assailant know where you are. Know you're coming, or you're right there. Yeah. It's just a heavy boot, but because of those boots, he's able to tell that there's, like, a hollow, some, a hollow mm-hmm. part in the floor. Yeah. And he opens it up, and there's, like, a 
uh, basement to yes. this ice house, and he sees signs of um, the occult, or yeah, like a circle, a circle in a triangle. Mm-hmm. And I think was it bones or something that he? I think there were bones in there oh, yeah, as well. Oh, yeah, it looks like. And then Edgar meets him there because mm-hmm. he had told Edgar to meet him there. And then they go once he said you know, he, he draws what he sees. Yeah. And then they go to the to his friend uh, Pepe. Yes. Played by Robert Duvall. And it was like at first, and it was it's crazy because it was like I wrote down the cast before mm-hmm. I watched the film. Okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I so I wrote down Robert Duvall, mm-hmm. but then like I, I forgot. No it was him. Yeah. And it was like I could barely tell. Mm-hmm. Um, but he he was great. He's like you know the knowledgeable about the occult and yeah, stuff like he's that. He's the expert in like these detective mystery movies that yes. they go to be like, this guy can help us out. Sometimes, yeah, he's your librarian. Yeah. Your... Sometimes the expert's evil. Is that the case here? <laughs> <laughs> so, so he gives uh, Poe a book that's in uh, French yeah. and he reads about how um, witches would, you know. Right. For the record, he like chucks the book at Poe. He's like, center page, read it. And I'm like, you just chucked this entire <laughs> book at this man. How is he supposed to read the right thing? Like, what, which center page? <laughs> it was just this whole thing. And he's like, and of course, Poe's like, oh, I know. And he opens to the right page and looks at it. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Poe starts reading it. And it's yeah. this passage about witches mm-hmm. and kind of rituals. Because yes. it was like, that's what it looked like. The circle and the triangle and the ice house looked like some type of ritual. For sure. Yeah. Um, and it mentioned the different types of hearts that they needed. So yeah. like one was... For like a witch's feast, this is what they eat. Yes. Yeah. And it was like, I think a man in love or something like it that. It was a dirty animals that Christians don't, oh, yeah, eat. don't eat. Yes. They don't, which I think as a Christian, I don't technically now, there's not really anything. But I back then, there was like probably a pig. Or yeah, like pork, but yeah. Um, then there was the hearts of unbaptized children. There we go. Uh, un- unbaptized virgin. Oh, oh no, no, children. It was children. You're yeah. right. Or like, I think they might have said virgin too. Yeah. It might have been unbaptized virgin. I think, I think, think it was child. children. It's children. You're okay. right. Or unbaptized child. Sure. And then it was just like this unbaptized. And the, yeah. And then the third was a hangman's heart. The heart, a hangman. Yeah. yeah. A hangman. Okay. Yeah. So then you get. Obviously, from what's happened with the, mm-hmm. the with Fry and what they found in the Ice House, it was like maybe this is the something from the occult. Yeah, you have a very clear like, all right, that's a hangman's heart. All mm-hmm. right, makes sense. Yeah. And so now you see Poe um, begin to infiltrate the cadets and like kind of him being kind of this spy for he's Lando. Damn clever. He was. It was, was real. It was, damn was, clever. That was another thing too. Yeah. Like I said, I love seeing these. How do, you, how do you like think on your feet? Because mm-hmm. as a detective, you can't just. This was interesting. Pissing me off about people being angry with cops not solving things. It's just mm-hmm. like criminals aren't like, "Hey, come find me," or yeah, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> eager to uh, confess. Yeah, like <laughs> you have to outsmart. Them. Yeah, you actually have to like <laughs> figure things out. They're so it's yeah. interesting seeing Poe go through this. Um, also, at the. Um, Oh, sorry. Well, okay, so he's talking to the doc. So he's talking to the guys, and he's just like, "Hey, is there anyone like that might be interested in the occult?" I'm a good Christian boy. Yeah. I would never do any of this. And like, he's like, "I can't." Well, tell us who it was. He's like, "I can't." And then another cadet's like, "Was it Marquis?" Yeah. And Poe's like, "Oh, I know who yeah, you know." So now I have a name. Yeah. And then he does like jumping jacks, and he talks to Doc. That was Marquise. interesting too, because he yeah. was like, he was trying to get out of some. Oh, he was. I guess trying to find a way to talk he, to the doctor. He was trying to. He wanted to talk to the doctor, so he made himself appear sick because he knew if he raised his heart rate and mm-hmm. said he had vertigo the doctor would see the increased heart rate and be like, okay, you yeah. are sick. Yes, I'll give you permission to not um, go to whatever, but report to an officer and my son, Marquise. Yeah. And okay, well, the, no, his last name is Marquise. His last name is Marquise. Yes. yes. Yeah. The doctor's last name is Marquise. His son's name is uh, Artemis. Yes, his son's name is Artemis Marquise. But yes. I think that, yeah. yeah. Is, so, and my son, Artemis, and we find out that's Marquise. So then we realize the doctor and Artemis Marquise yeah. are related. And after what I said earlier in the movie, now we know it's them. Because <laughs> I'm a detective, damn it. All right? <laughs> Let's get all the clues there. I can't lock up half of the <laughs> <I'm a> Hudson. <laughs> I'm like, and that's how we know. I have it in my notes. I'm like, that's how I know it's them. Done. All right, keep it moving. You can just cut it off. <laughs> exactly. I'd be a great 18 <laughs> 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 Which, 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 uh, my work here is done. Um, but also, so, so, uh, Ar- uh no, Artemis, uh, Poe joins, mm-hmm. uh, kind of Artemis's crew now. because he meets Artemis because, and yeah. has like that sassy nature. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and then this is where you see once again, uh, uh, Landor and Pat- Patsy in bed. Yes. And 
he hears something, so he's he's woken up mm-hmm. and he has a vision of his uh his daughter, yeah, uh, Maddie, like right? scrubbing at something, yeah, scrubbing at something. And then I'm thinking this was the horror element. Yeah, for once again, this was I thought they were going to lean into the like you being haunted by yeah the, the ghost of the past or something like that. But no, it's, it just it me, you know, was, I wasn't sure if like maybe she had come back because he mentions about his daughter, his wife died, yeah, and his um daughter runs away, daughter runs away or something like that. Yeah, he, he often mentions that. And um, so I'm thinking maybe she's returned. Maybe mm-hmm. this is another element of it. But she immediately kind of disappears. Yeah. He, like, looks away, looks back. She's gone. Yeah. And then I was like, oh, crap, something's going to jump out. And nothing jumped out. Yeah. And then so uh, Land, Land, Lando. Lando. Lando Calrissian. <laughs> Lando goes to the <laughs> funeral of Fry. Mm-hmm. Um, and there he meets uh, Fry's mother. Yes. And at the so so this is where it was, like, kind of split into two, I think, two storylines. So yeah. Yeah. Poe infiltrating Artemis and his friends. Mm-hmm. We meet Ballinger and like different different yeah. um, friends there. And then you have uh, Landor at the funeral. Mm-hmm. He meets the um, he meets Fry's mother, who and she says that uh, she got a, a diary yeah. that was sent to her by a classmate of Fry's, who was Ballinger. Who mm-hmm. at the same time, and this, I think I like to split because at the same time we're meeting Ballinger. Yeah. He's a part of Artemis's crew. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Who is also yeah. who I assumed at this time being a detective, obviously, mm-hmm. that this is the bad bunch yeah. that Fry's roommate has exactly. been talking about. Yeah. At this point, I'm just like, cool. All right, that bad bunch gets together and they sacrifice people to the occult. That's what they do. Done. I'm a detective. Arrest Don't them all. Think too <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um. So he opens the diary, mm-hmm. and you see it's just like very much encoded. You can't yeah. really tell. Like Super she, she mentioned, out, like yeah. numbers and stuff like that. So this is where you get as Poe is. So he's in the inner circle. Mm-hmm. Like he's kind of like proving himself. He gets yeah. invited to a dinner at uh, Marquis's house. Yep. The doctor Marquis Marquess. Sorry, Marquess Marquis. Yeah, the Marquises. Yes, he gets invited to a dinner at their home mm-hmm. where he meets um, Artemis's sister, uh, Leia. Leah. Yep. Leah. Leah. Sorry. Yeah, she's playing the piano, and he kind of woos her with it. Like so, obviously, Ballinger has a crush on her or mm-hmm. whatever. Um, but she's kind of not impressed with him. Yeah. And then you have Poe, who's obviously mm-hmm. a poet, so yep. he uses that to kind of like kind of woo her or whatever. Yeah. And he asks her on a date. Mm-hmm. Um, she says she's you know not not interested. And then he has an exchange with the maid in mm-hmm. French. In French. Yeah, yeah. And this kind of you know turns her because he said he would like to uh, like her audience. Yeah. Um, on Saturday. When he, um, so they go out on a, like, a date. And so it's after. Well, it's, so it's like. She, she, first she says no. Mm-hmm. Then when she sees he speaks French, yes. she's like, okay, sure. And then she's like, oh, well, where are we going to go? You know, a flirtation walk, et cetera. He's like, how about the cemetery? And, and I'm like, like, God damn it. <laughs> I'm like, hey, but that works. All right. I was so also like, like, is that the key? Yeah, I'm like, invite women to cemetery. Do I need to invite women to cemetery? Also, before uh, this happened at the same time, was our right after the funeral we had the journal we meet mrs marquise yes who's julia just, julia who's just weird awkward and i'm like evil <laughs> just weird and awkward I, I feel like the, and this is why i kept getting confused as to where west point was yeah. uh-huh. and i was like they were doing they kept calling him an american yes so i'm just like so what are you then well so what they called they, did she call christian bell an american too somebody no, had done edgar it. allen poe called yes, him an american yes. And then he was like, you're not American? He's like, I'm an artist. I transcend. You're not an artist. <laughs> so, yeah, right. because of the, that, mm-hmm. that slight mention, I thought, are we not? No, once again, I smooth dumped him. I don't know where West Point is. Yeah, it's in New York. <laughs> Upstate New York. <laughs> this is another <laughs> country, clearly. Yeah, for sure. Oh, it's not New York City. It's <laughs> but, yeah, so we see that. But, yes, then, again, the key to wooing any woman's heart is to invite her to a cemetery. Yeah, so they're in a cemetery, and mm-hmm. then at the same time, you meet uh, the doctor's wife, Julia, mm-hmm. and they have an exchange about... Uh, his wife again, and this is where the weird they, jilted exchange. Yeah, yeah. Um, so she was like, "I heard your wife died." I was like, "Who, who casually who brings that up? Who the hell are you? <laughs> what, what, I don't know you, and you're being awkward and weird." I'm like, "Evil." <laughs> um, and then, so he's gotten a diary, and now he's deciphering it. Mm-hmm. And once again, I love seeing how he and making it work. So he's yeah. like, he kind of puts it in water, or maybe, or maybe some kind of invisible ink solution, some kind of solution, and then he puts it on the window pane, and he, he's kind of able to decipher the words, and the first word I noticed, it was like the bottom left, was uh, Ballinger. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, uh-oh, I don't know, yeah, this guy's yeah. a little mm-hmm. weird, and then like, so back at the cemetery, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> back at the cemetery, um, Ju- oh, not Julia, sorry, Aaliyah, Aaliyah. Mm-hmm. Uh, has, they're, they're talking, and like, uh, I think he's very like smitten with her, but yeah. she's like kind of like standoffish mm-hmm. about it. And, and he's talking about death again. Yeah. Oh. And she kind of stands up 
and has a, a seizure or something. Yeah, she has a because she's clearly sick. So yeah. Edgar Allan Poe realizes his best game to get with a sick girl is to take her to a cemetery, which she might have to go to soon, and talk about death to her, which she'll love. But she does. So. <laughs> <laughs> romance, I suppose. Romance. <laughs> but then she stands up and has a seizure. So this woman is really sick. Yeah. And so she has a seizure. Mm-hmm. He stays with her. Yeah. She wakes up and I think she he takes her home. I'm assuming. He must. And then surely I think he's on his way home and yeah. now night is falling. And now it's pitch black. First it's like the afternoon and he takes her home. <laughs> now it's pitch black midnight. That's <laughs> what it's so Time before like two <laughs> lamps and like electricity. It was just terrible. Yeah, that's true actually. So we're in D.C. Whenever I go to like Virginia for it, like wineries, it's like 7 o'clock. It's pitch black. I'm like, <laughs> all right, there's not a street lamp around here. That's well, I went to there's a family in Georgia. It was like the like. street. <laughs> <laughs> in the, like there's no street lights. The only yeah. lights are from cars that are coming on. Yeah, <laughs> we're city folk apparently. <laughs> so, <laughs> I have Stop. family in the country. All right, I've, I've done my country time. All right. um, but yeah, so as he's walking home, yeah. in the you know in the pitch black, he gets assaulted. Yep, and it's by Ballinger. Yep, and he they are like really going at it, and like at the well, end, Ballinger's beating the crap. Out yeah, <laughs> and yeah. right before he you know. Like Ballinger picks up a rock. He's so like no, before rain. that. So oh, like yeah. before he picks up the rock, he's kind of like choking out Edgar on right. the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Land- Landor comes and yeah. hits him. Yeah, hits him with a little. And this, I think this is what was interesting because of the fact that he hit him, but he like Ballinger was still in rage. He picks yeah. up the rock and continues. Yeah, like, and I, you would think the normal. Well, I guess not normally, but like in those moments. The per- person coming in and stepping in to stop the fight, like that's it. Yeah, but yeah. he was like, they, he was like still enraged. Yeah, and he like picks up a rock and he like uh, he's still gonna brain EAO. Yeah. <laughs> and Landor goes, "You will be court martialed and all this stuff." Yeah. And I think that kind of brings him to his senses. His senses, and he yeah. goes, "Just stay away from Leah," because mm-hmm. um, obviously he's you know he's in love with her. He has a little crush. Which that's what you do when you have a crush on somebody. If someone else talks to him, you kill him. All right, <laughs> invite girls to cemeteries, kill competition. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the two meddling kids don't. <laughs> two meddling kids do not, do not agree with murder in any way, shape, or form. I need to get the disclaimer. Let's dump that. <laughs> need a disclaimer. <laughs> but yeah, so uh, now the next scene we see. Uh, well, no, so we're in the bar first mm-hmm. after the after the fight. Yeah, and Edgar's going in on about how people have always mm-hmm. uh, underestimated him. Yeah. Um, except for his mother, mm-hmm. and it was—I don't know if he brought it up earlier, but it was like he mentioned. I think this—it was—he like briefly mentions it. It was after he deciphered the note, mm-hmm. and this is why he went. This is why Landor went to Patsy to ask about Poe because yeah, Patsy yeah. was being weird. He mentions that his mother had written the poem, mm-hmm. and he was like, "But my mother's been dead for twenty years, but she visits me," and he's like, "All right, I need to check on this." Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> something might be happening here. <laughs> And yeah. so uh, after you know, so after the fight, they go to the bar, mm-hmm. and he it, Edgar just mentions people have always like underestimated him. Yeah, and stuff like and that. he's saying next time I'll see him, he'll kill him. And yeah. He's saying that he's like Edgar's like next time I see Ballinger or next time we cross swords, I'll kill him. Yeah, and he said the other way. And then so now we're back in bed with uh, Landor and Patsy. Yep, and she was like, so obviously, like, so who do you think it is? Like, mm-hmm. um, do you think it's uh, Ballinger? And he said, no, I think it's Artemis. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and then. Next, next thing you know, he gets to knock at the door with the captain. And he yep. says, "Ballinger's gone missing." Yes, yeah. And so, like the whole, because obviously this is the second mm-hmm. incident. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, they send out the whole cadet squad to search the the woods and everything that, and somebody finds uh, Ballinger hanging off the cliff with his heart uh, also with another hole in his heart. Yes. Yeah. And um, but this time, as as they're doing the autopsy, they notice that it's been. It's rougher. It's rougher. It's not as precise as the first person as to do fries, it. Uh, fries mutilations. Mm-hmm. And he's also been castrated. Yeah, and he's also been castrated here too. And then, oh, we forgot to mention this earlier. Uh, farm animals also. There were like two or three yeah. farm animals. Yeah, that also sheep had or something like that. Yeah. That was yeah. But I think that was real brief. At, at, like, that was like super shortly after. Yeah, that was mentioned. It was like that was mentioned, and then around the same time was like the Ocal. Okay. Like, yeah, like with uh, Pepe. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, you yeah, eat the hearts of like sheep and goats and stuff. Yeah, because yeah. goats are like the devil. Okay, so it's probably like goats or sheep for the. I just put that together. I'm a damn detective. Look at me. <laughs> well, I didn't just, I earned this badge. <laughs> like, you see this? <laughs> um, but yeah, so then, so obviously the captain's there and uh, Thayer's Thayer Thayer. or something like that. Yeah. And they're. Other captain, yeah. Yeah, yeah. they're <laughs> kind of like questioning. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Landor's competence. And it wasn't, yeah. this has been one of those things if he was like drunk or some shit like that. Yeah. It makes sense their frustration because like, it's been a month of him. It's been a month of you drinking and doing whatever. But, but it was like, no, he was just like, it's been a month of him, you know, yeah. detecting exactly. as one does. Like, <laughs> we don't have DNA testing. The man's like, we don't have DNA testing, <laughs> sir. I'm doing everything I can. Sir, <laughs> you got a, a fucking old apple over yeah. there. <laughs> I'm like, come on. <laughs> Um, but then this exchange is very interesting because uh, the captain brings up the fact that it was like, do you have something against the military academy? Mm-hmm. Oh, right, 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 right. And he's like, he says no initially. Then he go, he kind of takes Landor takes a step back and he was like, I believe that the academy strips the men, these young men of their will. Like you're supposed to be teaching them discipline and all these things, but I think it strips them of their will. Yeah. And because of that. Um, and it, he's also mentioned the fact that the, one of the killer that's, doing these atrocious things is associated with the Academy. Mm-hmm. So therefore I blame this on the Academy. Yeah. 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 And uh, a fair, I think mentions is like, that's like blaming every mm-hmm. act committed by a Christian, every uh, uh, like violent act committed mm-hmm. by a Christian. Yeah. yeah. And blaming Christianity. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, but this was that thing. It was just like saying, yes, I have something. It was like, if I had to answer, uh, yeah. I do have something against the um, the academy. The academy, and it was like this is this is my flashing back to mm-hmm. his daughter running away, yes. and like possibly like maybe she ran away with a cadet or something like that. Yeah, and this is around the time too when they're saying you're uh, not examining Poe, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. Yes. So, oh, yeah. so yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So it was like they mentioned that because uh, Poe had told when he introduced when well, we met, met him at the crime scene, he said, "Oh no, I never, I never." Yeah. Poe had no issue with Fry. Never, never met, met him. him before. But yeah. we find out from Thayer that they did have an yeah. issue. Poe has fought with both Fry and, and Ballinger now, and both people he's fought with wound up dead. Yeah, and so he this is so immediately uh, Landor goes to talk to to Poe about mm-hmm. his lies. And he says, "Just tell me the truth. Like, what are you doing?" Yeah, yeah. yeah. And he says, if "The fact that he's just been bullied, yeah, from the moment he got there, which is probably true, yeah, from like a real historical perspective as well." Um, so yeah, he questions his motives, and Poe's were like truthful in that moment. It was just like if I were to kill, like I did not, I you know, I didn't, um, I didn't kill anybody. Mm-hmm. I didn't do anything to the bodies. Like I didn't do this stuff. Yeah. If I were to kill everybody that had accosted me or, or like, bullied made fun me, of me or bullied him at the academy, the academy had like twelve people. In. Yeah, it's like that'd be basically everyone. Him saying like everyone has picked yeah. on him, everyone has treated him like crap, and he is never, but he would never do something like that. yeah, exactly. Um, so there was a little bit of tension there, but it was quickly kind of resolved. Mm-hmm. Um, and afterwards, uh, they both get invited to a dinner at the market. That's so random. No, I agree completely. Yeah. But you know what you're saying? It's just like so random. All of a sudden, they go from like this, and I was like, I have a dinner I need to yeah. go to. And he walks away, and all of a sudden, I guess he didn't realize Poe was yeah. also there. Yeah, they're both That's like telling dinner. somebody goodbye, and you both walk away. Yeah, the right same way. I'm like, well, all right. This was the weirdest freaking dinner ever. Super and weird. I was but like, it was, I think it, it was like maybe one of those like rich people type of things, like super weird. But why'd they invite them, though? Yeah, so they both. Both Poe and I get why Poe was invited. On. Yeah, Poe obviously because he's invited. a friend. Of, yeah, yeah. Um, so Landor and Poe get invited to mm-hmm. to the Marquises Marquesses mm-hmm. uh, house just to kind of because they're in mourning because of Ballinger's death. Ballinger yeah. was very close to the family. Yep, he was a friend, family friend, close to Artemis. And so, like, there's an exchange with between uh, Artemis, Artemis and Landor, because he's mentioning something about, like, somebody going through his room or something. Yeah, like which that. was probably Poe, honestly, who did, yeah. who went mm-hmm. through his stuff. But he's like, do you know anyone, weird old men in cottages that yeah. would do such things? He's like, really like, attacking. And it was like his mother, Julia, is just like, I hate I hate when you get like this. Yeah. And, like, so she has this, this outburst. Yeah. And, like, just kind of trying to get him to stop. Which, and she, just, yeah. like, gets up and, like, shatters her plate. Yeah. And then walks off. And I was just like, oh. Okay. Yeah, it's out of like, and I'm like, okay, we get, we've seen Julia Marquise like two or three times. She's weird as shit every time, and I'm like, you're really escalating this situation by jumping up and breaking a plate. And I'm like, and I'm like, this family's good. Everybody, calm down. Yeah. Slash. And, go. and I'm like, this family's weird. Well, now I'm yeah, yeah. <laughs> that did it for sure. So yeah. uh, the doctor invites uh, Landor to have a drink with him in his study. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and. Uh, they, you know, just having an exchange. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what they really talked. I don't think it was really that important. No, nah, not really. I think it's important for later in the movie the fact that he was in the study. Yes, yeah, I think. Um, and so Artemis comes in and says, uh, Leia has regaled us with her piano. Like, so she plays piano. That's mm-hmm. how they. That's how we meet her. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's how Poe met her. So she's playing piano. Poe sitting beside her, and Artemis invites his dad to play a game of chess with him. Yep. Yeah, yeah. And 
the doctor goes, you know, uh, Lando, will you join us? And he goes, yeah, I just want to step outside real quick for mm-hmm. um, for some fresh air. Yeah. And so while this family is in the, the parlor, I guess, uh, Lando goes to search the house. Yep. And he's searching in a closet because, and we failed to mention this. Oh, so. fair. Yeah. So what happened after Fry got murdered, mm-hmm. obviously, son not murdered, He he's found hung. They mm-hmm. take him to the morgue. Yep, the morgue. And... While he's at the morgue, somebody morgue, somebody carves out his heart. Mm-hmm. And when Landor went to interrogate the guy that was standing watch, mm-hmm. he says that some another cadet relieved an him. Officer. An officer, an officer relieved. An him. officer had relieved him. Yeah, and he just noticed that one of his um, the stripes on one of his on his left shoulder were missing. Yeah. So he still had some of his officer stripes yeah. on one shoulder, but not on the other. And I'm like, you didn't think that was fishy, man? Yeah. You didn't think to like mention that to anybody? Or yeah, so. As Landor is in the closet mm-hmm. in the Marquis Marquess's house, he finds this jacket, this j- officer's jacket mm-hmm. with the with the um, stripes missing. stripes missing. Yeah, but as he finds it, Julia is in the closet. And once again, these I I assumed it was coming. Yeah, yeah. Because it was like once again, I thought horror, so I'm waiting for something mm-hmm. horrific to happen. So she kind of does a jump scare. She's in it. Was like, did you get lost or yeah. whatever? And so she takes him back to the parlor, and he's still holding the jacket. Mm-hmm. And the doctor says the doctors told me to get this. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's the yeah. excuse to Julia. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. And so, like, he show he comes down with the jacket, and the doctor goes, um, "Why do you Why do you have that?" There's yeah. like that's my that's the only, only thing I have of my brother who died. Yeah. And uh, Landor goes, "Well, maybe we should ask mm-hmm. Artemis." Yeah, yeah, yeah because yeah. he's once again he's fingering Artemis as the one who killed Fry. Killed Ballinger Kill, and, car- and carved out the carved out the heart. Yes, yeah. and then at this moment, there's a knock on the door mm-hmm. because another cadet has gone missing. Right. Yes, absolutely. That's what it was. Um, yeah. Stoddard. Yeah. The Stoddard. Yes. Stoddard. Yes. And um, sorry, gets caught in the closet. Yeah. So he gets caught in the closet. They go. So yeah. they they stop everything. Yeah. And then they go look for Stoddard. Yeah. And so as they're searching, um, what's his name? Landor says. Well, right before they start searching, mm-hmm. actually, Landor says, "I went to his room." Well, I think that, yeah, when, all his civilian clothes are gone. I don't think he's. I think he ran away. Yeah, and not that he's missing. And then he mentions the fact that in Fry's journal, mm-hmm. uh, he they were they were both Stoddard and Ballinger and Fry were very good friends. Yes. So I think Stoddard. He says I, I'm deducing that Stoddard saw two of his friends get uh, brutally murdered. He didn't want to be next. Yeah, he thought so he'd he be just, next, so he just fled. Yeah. Um, and so I think this is where it kind of it starts it starts like racing. Yeah, exactly. A bit because there's so much going. Like they're trying to wrap up all the loose ends. And this is really what I was talking about in the movie. Is mm-hmm. they're trying to wrap up all these loose ends. They didn't build as many relationships mm-hmm. as you really could have. So it kind of leaves the climax a little flat, in yeah. my opinion. Mm-hmm. Like both there's two climaxes, and both of them I think fall flat because you don't see all the relationships that were built mm-hmm. up beforehand. So we have. Um, Landor goes back to Pepe yep. to learn more about the occult. Mm-hmm. You have Poe back at the Marquez's house, mm-hmm. Marquez's house with Leah and Artemis and Artemis. Yeah, and um, Leah's like, "Will you do something? Will for you me? do something?" For yeah, me. because he's, he's like, "I'll do anything for yeah, you." Yeah, he's yeah. mentioned that basically he's falling in love with her. Yeah, and so she makes a face, like a weird face, and then mm-hmm. says, "Will you do something for me?" Yeah, and then at the same time, you see uh, Landor at. At, at Pepe is going through a book. Yes, because he noticed something. He, he they mentioned more about this witch hunter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, who had you know, Lysark or something. Lysark, yeah, Lysark yeah, or Lysark. something like that. And who had basically killed a bunch of witches, and then they, the, I think, the people turned on him, and yeah. he was. I think he was also he killed a bunch of witches, but then he also practices witchcraft yeah. himself. So yeah, and so he you know looks uh, in a book, sees something, and then rushes back. To the Marquess's what house. What did he see? What did he see? Yeah. <laughs> What's in the box? What's in the box? Yeah. Um, and so he goes back to the to talk to to confront the doctor. Yeah, Doctor Marquis. Yeah. And then this is what I was saying about the they have been in the study before, mm-hmm. and now he noticed a picture of Le Cirque or whatever. Yep, yep. Le Cirque was both in the book and it's... and there's a portrait on uh, the doctor's wall. So yeah. obviously they are related. Yes, they're great great grandfather. Yes, and then so he starts asking about. Um, witchcraft and like, obviously your daughter's sick because like, yeah. he I think that's something that uh, oh yeah he mentioned that that's what they mentioned in when they went to the study mm-hmm. after dinner he was like I, was, I think oh, your daughter's, daughter's sick. sick and he was like you're yeah. very observant yeah yeah, yeah or whatever yeah. and so this is I think this is that rush where you get the doctor just admitting like um, 
let his daughter can talk to dead people. Talk to the dead. <laughs> what? And like she's you know she wasn't supposed to live for X amount of well, for three like she could have died within three months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But she came to him with a solution saying like this guy if they perform these rituals or whatever and yeah. they happen to be working. So he admits that. Um, they did steal Fry's heart. Yeah, but they didn't kill anybody. They didn't kill anybody. They they wouldn't do that. Yeah, I mean, but it's this whole like Leah. They were just like, "Yep, Leah said she can talk to dead people. That dead person she's talking to said do this ritual, mm-hmm. and it's working." So and they, yeah, he thinks it's the it's the Lacerte talking through the yeah the daughter, and then is at, it actually though? Is it? No. And then at the same time, <laughs> you see both Artemis and Le- Leah. Keep calling her Leah. Yeah. Leah. Um, they have a lot of Star Wars sounding names. Yeah, like Landor. Like that could be Andor or Lando Calrissian. <laughs> Leia. That could be Princess Leia. It's, it keeps uh, stumping <laughs> me. But they. Yeah. So you see them in a rituals. I assume in Ice House. Yeah, that's Ice House. Yeah. yeah. And they have him tied up, uh, oh, that pole tied, tied up, up. and yeah. he's like kind of in a some type of trance. Well, he's bleeding pretty bad. And yeah. yeah, they're bleeding him. Yeah. Um, and he, oh, that maybe that's what it was. It was, it was lack of blood. Yeah. It goes. Well, I mean, I think they, dr- they probably drugged him too. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah, they're bleeding him and they're like spreading the blood out for the mm-hmm. ritual and all that. And so now like, you know, it's like you said, it's the whole family. It's, yeah. Like, so, uh, well, Mark, he's technically isn't the one do- he was just like, yes, you can have the heart, but yeah. like, I'm not mm-hmm. going to do anything. Yeah. So at this point you're just like, yes. So the kids are now murdering people. This was my thought because, uh, Landor is talking about, he's like, it's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are? Mm-hmm. Like that old Fox News commercial. Yeah. And <laughs> he, was like, he was like, well, they, he said, but Poe was here. Yeah. And then he left with Artemis. Artemis and and he was like, well, where's Leah? Yeah. So then he's just like, what? So he's like, okay, so Marquise isn't doing it. It's Artemis and yeah. Leah who are going like, Yeah, the, the kids are doing it. And yeah. then, like, so you see Leah uh, doing some Latin ritual or something yeah. like that. Wiping blood on her face. Wiping blood on her face. Her mother's there as well. So like now you know the whole. Doing weird, creepy yeah. Julia shit. Like, <laughs> So what you doing all movie being weird, creepy Julia. Yeah, and then so like, um, yeah, they're performing the ritual. Yep, and they're about to do the knife. About to literally because they, yeah, they marked his heart yep. and everything. Like, well, marked his chest where you know where they're going to do the incision, and then Landor comes in and just tries to stop them. Artemis, yep. like both Artemis and uh, Leia, grab knives. Mm-hmm. They're like, you can't stop. We're almost done. It was like this. Yeah, is, because it's very interesting. It was just like it's almost finished. Like obviously she's been. Sick for a very long yeah, time, like her whole she, life potentially. She's been doing yeah. all this stuff. Like it, this is it was only. And it seems like it's been working. Yeah, apparently. And so like <laughs> Artemis and Landor get into a scuffle, and right. like so Le- uh, Leah's still like performing the ritual because her mom is telling her to. Mm-hmm. Well, like in the scuffle, the candle gets knocked over, so there's fire. Now, yeah, so everything's now on fire. Yeah, everything's on fire, and. I don't, I laughed. I'm I did. I laughed so it was hard funny. when I saw this. So because he was like, you could tell, like, so that a, a beam above <laughs> Leah's head cracks at, cracks at first. It was like super, yeah. super telling what was going to yeah, happen, yeah. and then it just falls on her, and all I heard was, Boop. Like, <laughs> and she just like, oh, like just gets pushed real fast off screen. Like there's a blur. She's just going wham, and she's out. And I'm like, ah, that was fun. I laughed. I did. I like, <laughs> was, like that was funny and shit. <laughs> so, uh. Lander goes and saves Poe, like he drags yeah. Poe out, and then he goes to get Julia. Because Julia and Artemis are like trying to dig yeah, trying Leah to out, dig Leah out, and then, like Artemis is holding his sister. Yeah, and then the rest of the roof collapses on, on, on the both of them. <laughs> on them after. So that was my thing with this whole part, though. This scene felt fell so flat for me mm-hmm. because even like the Artemis and Leah like holding each other like that, and like Artemis being willing to do all this for his sister. Yeah. we see no interaction. It's just an them. assumption because they're family. Exactly. It's, it's, it's like yeah, it's, it's like but we you, had to give them more yeah. than the movie did. But that's an unhealthy obsession, right? right? Like, I love my two little sisters. Am I really going to go around and murder people for them? Yeah, probably. But still, it's an unhealthy obsession. I think it's also, it's also because <laughs> of the fact that they introduced this occult stuff and yeah. then, like, it went dead. Yes. And then popped up. It was zero up. to 100 real quick with some of this stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and you don't see all this occult stuff happen. Mm-hmm. All of a sudden, you're just like, boom, we got this. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. If they would have introduced horror elements, mm-hmm. it would have made more sense with the occult Oh, yeah, stuff. for sure. Yeah, and I, that's what I assumed when they mentioned the occult and witches and stuff like that. I was like, oh, so this is going to be there's going to be flashes and going to be something in yeah, the yeah. shadows every time the lights go down. Mm-hmm. Something's gonna I want to see cloven hooves and like you know little horns popping out of places. But yes, yeah. so movie over the end. It wraps yeah, up real nicely. It wraps up real nicely for me. It's just like it like um. So we, the next morning you see uh, Landor. He's visiting Poe in the hospital. Um, the captain mentions that you know they took. They didn't take that much blood from yeah. him, so he, he should No more than a doctor would for a bleeding. And yeah. I'm like, Jesus Christ, how much, that was a lot of blood. I'm like, that's a lot of blood for In a bleeding. In 1830? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's like, uh, I don't know. They yeah, yeah. have measuring cups. <laughs> Just, you know, half a liter's fine. <laughs> Is it still walking? 
Right, yeah, yeah, that's good enough. Yeah, maybe take a little bit more. He should be able to walk for a couple of hours after this bleeding. <laughs> like, Jesus. Um, and so they, I think they walk through the rest of the case saying that uh, the, tw- the the brother and sister were the ones that did it. Mm-hmm. Um, they're going to let Julia go because they're, she suffered. Yeah, they're them. letting both Julia and the doctor go. Because he resigned. So yeah. it was just like, that's, you know, whatever. They well, lost their children. Job, that's the same. Yeah. But also, in a way, I guess they didn't technically commit. Uh, if, if they're pushing for the children to be the ones that did the murder Fair. and the the parents were just kind of like, uh, what is it, accessories or well, something. Mom helped. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, she's chanting in Latin with blood on her face. That means mom helped. Doctor Marquise didn't help, but he resigned. So. But yeah, so case wrapped up. The mm-hmm. captain apologized. He's he mentioned he said I'm he apologized. He apologized if he ever made it seem like he was incompetent. Yes. Yeah. yeah or yeah. there was a question about your competence, mm-hmm. which once again would have helped yeah. if you would have seen. But at least Christian Bale, like obviously he was always in a bar, yeah. but he was never drunk or yeah. anything like that. And there was there was one scene in the entire movie where Christian Bale's like, "Are you questioning my competence?" Because yeah, that was during the, that was during the yeah. when he mentioned about the um, uh, the academy yeah. out there. One scene yeah. in the entire. There's one scene for this, and then like it's important that we bring it up at the end. I'm like, eh, it's it, again, it just kind of fell a little flat mm-hmm. because you didn't have that detail building up. Yeah. Before. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, I thought the movie was over, but they hit me with the return of the fucking king. Yeah. <laughs> this next part's pretty fucked, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. 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 And so, but once again, it was like very rushed, and it was just like, where does it, where is this coming from? Exactly. It's not 100 percent And so um Landor goes back to his his cottage or whatever, yeah. and uh Poe visits him. Yeah, Poe comes to visit. Yeah. And there was just long, long monologue about yeah. Poe actually figuring out what happened. What had really happened. So he says, um, my first clue was the note, mm-hmm. the, the sliver of the note that was left with Fry. Yep. And the note that Landor had left with, left him, just meet him in the icebox. Mm-hmm. Same handwriting. Same exact handwriting. So it was like, yeah. why would, why would the, you know, why would they be similar? Yeah. And then he went and he go, he went to talk to Patsy mm-hmm. about uh, Landor the same way Landor went asking about Poe. Yeah. And he finds out, you find, well, Poe finds out what happened to his daughter. Yeah. She didn't run away. Patsy's got loose lips. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God damn the devil on time. Was <laughs> <laughs> she just telling everybody everything? You're like, oh, um, yeah. But yeah, so you find out that um, uh, Landor's daughter, Maddie, was sexually assaulted yep. during the, uh, the, the Academy's uh, the ball. The ball. Yeah, the Academy um, ball. That by recently. three young men. And um, Fry, Ballinger, Stoddard. Yes. Were the ones that did it. And so, like, she, you know, got assaulted, uh, and then she just wasn't the same, and she mm-hmm. ended up ended up committing suicide. Yep. And so, Landor, mm-hmm. doing some research, being a detective he is, yeah. finds out that Fry was one of the young men because there was a locket that, I uh, think, uh, uh, not a locket, but, like, a chain or something, mm-hmm. a necklace that his daughter had snatched off of one of her assailants, yeah. and it had the... the um, the initials LF. Yes. For yeah. Leroy Fry. Leroy Fry. And this is something that was, you saw it earlier in yeah, the film. Yeah, this was a good plan. Yeah, but it was just sure. like, it didn't, if Poe would have had, like, um, Landor had to tell Poe that. Yeah. Like, how did you know that it was Fry? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So once again, it would have been even, like, he didn't even fully Figure solve the mystery. He just asked questions. And yeah. He, like, Patsy told him. Patsy told him the answer to this. And that was with the other thing, too, um, around this time when he was like, was that when he said? Oh no, we're still we're still examining it. Yeah. Then he says the line. Yes. So yeah. yeah so yeah. um, Landor finds out that Fry was one on one. So he writes him a note to mm-hmm. meet him at the the basically the murder scene. Yeah. So that and he ties him up. Well, he beats him over. You know, he beats him. Yep. Beats him with the club. And then he ties him up, trying to interrogate him to find out who the two other men were. Yeah. Well, yeah. He's hanging him. Right. He's, he's like, like yeah. He's and this is why right this now. is why his feet were still on the ground because he was not trying to kill him. Mm-hmm. It was just a kind of like an interrogation yeah. tactic. Um. But before he could get any any anything out of him, the cadet mm-hmm. um, that was patrolling the area is coming. So Landor runs away. Yep. And this is where you meet him in mm-hmm. the in the creek, yeah. washing his hands, washing the club, washing his hands in the, in the, in the bloody club. club. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then he gets summoned. So he's thinking, I'm just getting summoned. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Found out and this, is why, and yeah. this, goes, this was cool. This was interesting. This yeah. is why he was hesitant because he was yeah. like, why am I being summoned back to the place where I just left? Yep. And nobody saw me leave. Exactly. And it's not because they're accusing you of murder. Mm-hmm. It's because <laughs> they want to hire you yeah. to solve this murder. Yep. Yeah. And then. Because um, it also just magically worked out yeah. that. Uh, Marquise's kids needed a heart, yeah. So like they, went, yeah, they wouldn't. Yeah, that's what yeah. he was saying. Christian Bell had no idea that the heart was taken. Yeah, yeah. He, he yeah, it. he wasn't. Uh, like you said, 
uh, like the, the doctor said, his kids wouldn't kill anybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they, uh, they wouldn't take it from a live person. No, that's yeah. what they had told him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he also admits to uh, killing uh, Ballinger because yep. Ballinger was the the next one. Yep. No, he and found he, Ballinger's name in, in the diary. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, the diary. Yeah. And so the, he went after um, Ballinger had attacked Poe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Landor went and, and attacked uh, Ballinger back and interrogated him and got the name of the third assailant, who was yep. St- Stoder or Stoddard? Stoddard. Yeah. Um, but, and then he said he also carved out his heart mm-hmm. to make it look to like make it look like the what the um, the other the other killer had and he also him. carved out the animals' hearts the farmers' mm-hmm. hearts too to like to kind of throw them off yeah, yeah to throw them off and have that connection so because that's why he went with, so he got that from Pepe yes yeah yeah it wasn't something that he was doing mm-hmm. which was I guess well they're talking well, he about did that's see, interesting well he, he they didn't go to Pepe until after he saw the circle and triangle which does yes. say a cult. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then, I think that's what I think he was he was patching together the rest of this work. Yeah. I'm trying to remember the, what I'm trying to remember is: did he kill the farm animals before or after Pepe? He might have. I feel it like before. after. I, th- I think it was after. I don't remember because, because, because we wouldn't have known about the the goats or anything like that yeah. until we learned. Like the audience, we wouldn't have he, known why that was important until after Pepe. He yeah. might have done it before Pepe because he was smart. Because like so, Lander is a very smart dude. Mm-hmm. So and he even said he was leaning towards. A call yeah. before going to Pepe. Okay, so I think he might have. Again, I could be wrong. Honestly, I, I, I feel before. like it would have been cooler if he would have learned that in that that scene that we saw Pepe, mm-hmm. and then he's just thinking on his feet. I think it would be cooler if he did it beforehand and was able to manipulate everything. Either way, either, yeah. Yeah. yeah, either way, smart dude. He's manipulating things. But yeah, so yeah. he kills, you know, kills Ballinger, mm-hmm. and it just he, like you said, he just kind of got lucky that the doctor's children were also killing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> At the same time. And he got his, you know, he got his revenge. And he said, well, he's too tired and doesn't have enough will to chase down and mm-hmm. run down Stoddard. And he's like, and he, so it's up to, what happens next is up to you, yeah. to, to Poe. And then Poe is like, oh, am I your fool, right? Am mm-hmm. I the fool? And this is where Christian Bale's, uh, Landor says, well, no, you were never my fool. You were who was supposed to figure this all out for me mm-hmm. in the first place. That He said that, and I was like, what? That's dumb. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, no, because you don't even know this dude at all. You saw him randomly, and you just magically picked it. And then it continues on with this relationship that they have together. They don't have this relationship. I have not seen their relationship this entire movie. Yeah. And look, they've been, they've helped each other out. They're both very smart. But then Edgar Allan Poe's like, you helped me, you know, with my mother. Yeah, I would have helped you with your mother. And it was like, that's not something you could have actually done. And, but that, and also it's like, how did he help you with your mother, dude? You told him a poem your mom wrote. That's that's the only stuff with your mom I've seen. And I'm, I'm coming off a little strong here. But again, like, at the end, I was just like... I, I think it's because of the fact that this second part... Like I said, it's a return of the king. It's like, yeah. And I, it's crazy. I just watched a, a movie list where it's like movies that went on way too long. Mm-hmm. Like that, the Batman from last year. Okay. Yeah, where it yeah, should have yeah. just ended after he you know, saved him from the... Yeah, fair. Oh, no, actually, it should have ended when um, when uh, the Riddler blew up the, the city. Okay. The flooded okay. city. That should have been ending. But mm-hmm. um, so, yeah, they kind of returned to the kingdom and it was just like it was an ending we really didn't need because yep. it wasn't something we were looking for. Yeah. I mean, like, you, t- you told us stuff that like it wasn't like, oh, we like we questioned if the kids did it or not. Yeah. But see, that's the thing. This was integral to the story. Mm-hmm. The, the whole entire book. And the, this is why I said the book the, is part. The fact that Landor did all of this and was able to manipulate it and mm-hmm. that relationship that he has with Edgar Allan Poe, I bet in the novel is so important. Yeah, probably. But in the movie, you just don't see that same importance of that relationship they have together at this time. And they're cr- because they are crying, they are acting it perfectly. Yeah, they are crying. There is emotion in this scene. Yeah, for somebody you knew for a month. Yeah, right. But like, I bet there's a lot more of like you know intimations that they have together, yeah. and there's like them talking and discussing. Honestly, it's, this seems more the way these stories were like put together. It seemed more like it was a series, mm-hmm. and they like a series of books. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, the pale blue eyes, the the story we're going to focus on, but we're in in. And putting other stories from other novels yeah. as well. I don't actually. Well, fun. I totally should have mentioned this in the very beginning as well. I actually, I met the author of Pale Blue Eye years ago. That's also why I, I think you did tell me that. Yeah, well, I didn't think I told the audience. Oh. So back in my city year Teach for America days, it was a gala at one of them. The author of the Pale Blue Eye was sitting at my table. It was my job to try and get money from donors, as one does for city year and Teach for America. So I wound up just chatting with him and his husband for a long time. Lovely couple. They were a lot of fun. Had a great time. 
friends with them on Facebook. I haven't talked with them in years, but then that's how I actually knew more about Pale mm-hmm. Blue Eye was because I saw on uh, Lewis Bayard's Facebook, he was like, hey, my movie's getting turned into a, uh, my book's getting turned into a movie. I was like, cool. But now, yeah, now, now back. So there's all this emotion going on. There's all this relationship going on between Chris Landor and Edgar Allan Poe, but I didn't see it. So yeah. it all just fell flat for me. Yeah. And then he's like, Landor hands him a note. Yeah. And I guess that's his confession maybe. Mm-hmm. And then Edgar Allan Poe burns it yeah. and walks out. And then it's this, I wish Maddie would have met you at the uh, military ball. Yeah. We could have been a family for real. And again, I'm like, the fuck are you talking about? Yeah. I'm like, what? Again, which very sentimental makes sense. I think you're right. If they would have padded in more of the his uh, motives. We needed 20 minutes of. I think it would have yeah. been more interesting if you knew why he was there. And it's yeah. like kind of like a knives out, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We're like. You knew who the killer was, but like, how are they going to get away with it? So, like, seeing him, oh, it was oh, the movie I saw uh, where this dude tried to kill his wife, and like, he kept thinking on his feet because it mm-hmm. like the the attempt went wrong. Yeah. Oh, was this the Hitchcock movie? Yes, the Hitchcock yeah, Dial in for murder. Yes, yes, Dial in. So for it was just like him thinking on his feet, trying to get mm-hmm. away with it. So like, yeah, we would have seen if we would maybe halfway through the movie, mm-hmm. if we would have found that the Christian Bell had killed yeah. Fry, and now it's like him covering his tracks, but also trying to solve this thing mm-hmm. because yeah. technically another crime did happen. Yeah. Like that would have been, I guess, more interesting. But maybe we should just—I think mean, we should just check out the book. Yeah, I think the book, and I bet, especially with how it's acted like this, there's probably like an hour that was mm-hmm. cut from. Yeah. Because obviously they film a movie; it's like three, four hours long. Then they have to come in and cut yeah. it to make it movie mm-hmm. length. I bet filmed somewhere in an archive, they have like thirty minutes to an hour of much more exposition and uh, relationship building between Landor and Edgar Allan Poe. I think that would be helpful in sort of this honestly, point. yeah. If, even if it, the reason why he picked up was like he yeah. kind of saved them from something, exactly, like, right? Yeah. Something different. If you saw him as the outsider, yeah, or exactly. like being picked on, yeah, yeah. But so then uh, Edgar Allan Poe burns the note. He walks out, mm-hmm. and then you have Christian Bale, Landor, uh, going to the same cliff that his daughter committed suicide on. Yeah. It looks like he's about to commit suicide. Mm-hmm. Then he releases her ribbon and says, "You're free now, love." He said, "Like rest, rest, yeah, rest now, life. love, and then fade to black." Yeah. So it's like, you know, did he did he kill himself? Did he not? I was pretty blown with that too. I was like, and I, in my notes, I'm like, and of course he kills himself, but we don't see him kill himself, so maybe he did. Because it was like, I, like I said, I was excited to see the further adventures of oh, yeah. this detective. That would be really cool. So now we got to do like prequels of Landor when you know when he uh, was able to save the prostitute in New mm-hmm. York City. I want to see that detective. But that is the pale blue eye, everybody. Thank you so much for listening, Mike. Now that we have finished this, what is your rating movie? Has it changed at yeah, all? Yeah, it has, actually. Uh, What's it changed to? I feel like I'm not getting it down to a two and a half. From a three and a half to a two and a half? Yeah. Wow. I'm realizing the inconsistencies with the, Fair. Some, the storytelling now. I think I was, like I said, I think I was captivated by the, the mystery. Yeah, yeah. But I think the way it was, the ending was delivered. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know. I they could have done different things, but I, yeah. I feel like I really want to check out the book. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I want to see how it. it was done, how it was done. The Pebble you know, Lab by Lewis Bayard. He's the uh, writer. Yeah. Um, I'm going to leave mine as a three because I do think everyone tried very hard. It was very well set pieces again. Mm-hmm. The acting was still very nice. I know I was very. Yeah, I think it's all just story, really. Yeah, it's and it's story, and I'm next to positive. Granted, I don't know if I've read the book, but I bet a lot of those answers and relationships gets filled out more in the book. Mm-hmm. It's just hard to do that two hour movie versus say a 400, 500 page book. Yeah, but. That is, again, The Pale Blue Eye. Thank you so much for listening. If you'd like to reach out to us, tell us any movies you want to see, uh, please, Twitter and Instagram is Two Meddling Kids. If you would like to reach out to us on Google, we are Two Meddling Kids at gmail.com. Mike, how can they reach you? On Instagram at Days from Legendary. Perfect. And if you'd like to reach out to me on Twitter or Instagram, I am Ed Hunt 77 uh, Make sure we also have a TikTok, uh, Two Meddling Kids, and YouTube channel that this is going to be uploaded to. Uh, we upload shorts, and we should be having some more content coming out soon, too. So thanks for listening, everybody. We'll see you next week. Gotcha. A little bit longer than that.